Well, I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We turn now to Nicaragua, where at least five people were killed over the weekend amid escalating anti-government protests that have engulfed the country since mid-April. More than 110 people have been killed since widespread demonstrations to oust Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega began in mid-April, when his government announced plans to overhaul and slash Social Security. Amnesty International has accused the Nicaraguan government of using, quote, pro-government armed groups to carry out attacks incite violence, increase their capacity for repression, and operate outside the law. But supporters of President Ortega have blamed the opposition for much of the violence. Foreign Minister Denis Moncada has accused the opposition of pushing for a soft coup. Thousands have been injured, hundreds have been arrested in the demonstrations, including a Mother's Day march where government forces opened fire on demonstrators led by mothers of the victims last week. This is Nicaraguan Center for Human Rights President Vilma Nunez speaking to the Organization of American States on Monday. Above all, we have to highlight the brutal crackdown on the peaceful protest by the mothers, whose loved ones were killed in April, that took place on the 30th of May, when Nicaragua celebrates Mother's Day. This violence greatly exceeds the violation of the right to life of more than 110 people and hundreds of wounded, detained and tortured people. Only last night, seven people were killed, among them a 15-year-old kid. The government has denied responsibility for the scourge of killings in Nicaragua since mid-April. The protests and the government's bloody repression marked the biggest crisis since Ortega was elected 11 years ago. Ortega has served as president of Nicaragua since 2007. In the late 1970s, as the leader of the Sandinista National Liberation Front, he helped overthrow the U.S.-backed Nicaraguan dictator Anastasio Somoza. Ortega then led Nicaragua from 1979 to 1990, before being elected again in 2007. But the new protests have pitted Ortega against some of his former Sandinista allies. And that's who we're going to turn to now. For more, we're joined by three people. From Abuja, Nigeria, from Abuja, Nigeria we're joined by Alejandro Bendania. He is the founder of the Center for International Studies in Managua, Nicaragua. He served as the Nicaraguan ambassador to the United Nations, as well as secretary general of the Nicaraguan foreign ministry during the Sandinista, Sandinista government in Nicaragua from 1979 to 90. In Managua, we're joined by Monica Lopez Boltadano. She is a human rights activist who's on the front lines of protest in Nicaragua and the author of a book about the Nicaraguan Canal. And in New York, we're joined by Stephen Hellinger, president of Development Gap, the development group for alternative policies, which has worked around the world with local organizations since 1976 to promote economic justice through changes in prevailing international economic programs and policies. He's lived and worked extensively in Nicaragua. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Let's begin with Monica Lopez uh, Baltadano. You're on the ground in Managua. Explain what's happening. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, what we have been seeing for the past uh, 45 days is the rise up of a very strong popular rebellion against the violence of Daniel Ortega's government. Uh, the rebellion has been led by youth. Uh, mostly uh, kids in the uh, youth in the universities, but also it's now become a, a rebellion of all Nicaraguan population. We have seen massive pro protests on the streets and also uh, important uh, actions of protest uh, that are happening. For instance, uh, uh, more than 70 percent of the roads in Nicaragua are blocked by population that is uh, requesting two basic things, justice for the more than 100 127 people that have been murdered by Ortega's regime so far, and more than 1,000 people injured, and also uh, the decision of Nicaraguan population that Ortega and his wife leaves power. And the protests are uh, uh, getting higher and bigger every day. Today, Managua is blocked all over of the main streets uh, because uh, people are not being represented by the negotiation process the government is trying to uh, uh, move forward forward without the, uh, uh, com uh, accomplishing what people is asking, is that they leave power as soon as possible.
And Alejandro Bendania, I wanted to ask you, uh, you served in the Sandinista government. Uh, can you explain what's happened in Nicaragua uh, under uh, Daniel Ortega? What has changed uh, since you occupied these senior uh, uh, government positions in the Sandinista government? Well, thank you, and, and, and good morning. Uh, one has to remember key historical facts. The Sandinista revolution began in 1979 and ended in 1990 with the uh, electoral defeat of Daniel Ortega. But this does not spell the, the end of Ortega, because for 17 years, he worked tenaciously to get back into power. But to do this, he got rid of his potential competitors and many old Sandinista backers. He embraced uh, corporate capital in Nicaragua. He, he adopted the most retrograded positions of the, of the church and entered into an alliance and reached an understanding with the U.S. so that uh, he was able to barely win the presidency in 2000. In 2007, but by that time, he himself is no longer a Sandinista. Yes, the trappings, the colors are still there, but his entire government has been, in essence, neoliberal. Then it becomes authoritarian, re re repressive, yet it continued to maintain a, a leftist rhetoric, chiefly for the benefit of getting Venezuelan uh, uh, cooperation money. But that, too, came to an end, not only the money and also the Ortega's backing for the Maduro government has also ended, as seen in recent votes in the OAS, where he uh, refused to, the, the present government refused to back uh, or, or vote against a resolution that wanted Venezuela kicked out of the OAS. And Alejandro, can you explain? You just said uh, that Ortega came to an understanding with the U.S. Uh, what do you mean by that? Okay, there's two aspects to that. First is the historical understanding. Uh, Ortega, the military to military relations uh, under the uh, Ortega government have, have always been very, very, uh, very, very warm. Uh, anti-drug, anti-immigration. What Ortega tells the United States is, I'm going to keep the Nicaraguans from flowing up northward to, to your borders, but and I'm going to give you stability for capital, And um, but I want a little leeway with foreign policy and rhetoric. Now, this understanding became has became strained, but what we now have in the last uh, 10 days is a new, and we need to denounce this clearly, an un a negotiation that is taking place in Washington between Ortega and the United States government that is being mediated by the Organization of American States Secretary General Luis Almagro to try to ease Ortega out of office. Now, that would be OK if he left tomorrow. But the problem is that negotiation means uh, he wants to go through constitutional changes, electoral changes, and an eventual election. And we'd be talking about a year, year and a half. So what we're—and that's too long when two or three or four people are getting killed and gunned down every day. In addition to that, those are negotiations that, secondly, should be taking place in, in Washington. And third, um, cannot me signify impunity for Ortega, which was the which is the first thing he he's putting on the table. So he has to go, and then we can talk about with a provisional uh, arrangement for a, for a transition government. But this negotiations means more death and destruction. Can you talk about the issue of Social Security, the, what has prompted these protests, Ambassador Bandanya? Also, I mean, you are a very well-known uh, Sandinista, what this means to you to be speaking out now, um, in 2018, against your former longtime ally, Danielle Ortega. 
Oh, yes, I was embarrassingly close to Daniel Ortega, but I broke with him in, in, in 1998, that's 20 years ago, as have a good many people. Many of us were already there. We consider ourselves Sandinistas and believe that, uh, that Ortega and his cohorts uh, betrayed the, 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 Nicaraguan, the Nicaraguan revolution. So what we're trying to, what we are part of this broad movement that wants him out, but we do not renounce our ideals. We do not renounce Sandino. We do not renounce our identity. But he has to go if there is any prospect of Nicaragua re-embarking on a path toward first reform and eventually more structural institutional change. He is now the, prince of the principal obstacle as seen from a left perspective. Unfortunately, that's not seen uh, the same way by people who, uh, on the left that are ignorant of the reality. The social security issue was simply the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Before that, there had been the uh, the, the destruction of a, of a biological reserve. The students, it must be said, the students went out into the streets. And Ortega, instead of usually repressing uh, by, by police uh, methods, did something that was fatal. He opened, ordered the, the police to open fire on the students. And from that day forward, his alliances began to crack and and Nicaraguans, and many of us, were shocked by what happened well, speaking because of it was a disboarding of, of people onto the streets, and it hasn't stopped.